Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Morning. Good JC here. So uh, we've been having some network issues over here on our end. But hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's all resolved. I hope so. We'll see. Yeah, looking good. All right. So, uh, JC, if you don't mind, can we restart on the uh, PvP discussion? Oh, of course, of course. Okay. So I, I, I was starting, you know, to make a very long answer, you know, <laughs> taking <laughs> one hour to get only one, one more question at the end. That was the one question. <laughs> So I, I try to be more brief. Um, PVP, so big topic, lots of work on our side. Um, just to be clear, uh, we, we're in for this for at least uh, probably you know one year of constant uh, you know, additions until we get to something we are happy with. Um, currently, there are imbalance in the PVP. Everybody knows that. And we are going to fix that in high priority before, before the end of the year. There will be uh, sort of a big release that fixes that, plus also all sorts of other uh, imbalances that we need to fix, by the way. Um, so probably we'll make a communication about that particular release where we explain all the things we are tweaking. On the PvP side, we're going to make sure, for example, that uh, you can't use any weapon size with any core that is going to be you know, tightly bound. Uh, we're going to fix the hit and miss formula so that we use, uh, in particular, the cross section, so you know the apparent size of whatever you're targeting. Uh, there will be a revamp on the radar and how they work. So there's this, you know, there's a lot of things just to fix the existing gameplay, just as it is. Uh, there will also be we're going to work on, you know, creating more events that that you know make the PvP interesting, so that you have some uh, different forms of PvP. For example, if we spawn an asteroid with a lot of valuable ore in it. Uh, into a PvP area that will, you know, create interesting PvP situations that are currently lacking in the game. Uh, so that's about the sort of mechanics we have today on the PvP in space. Uh, there's a, a, a set of additions that we would like to 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 put into that particular gameplay. Uh, you know, all the things you could have to enrich the, the possibilities. It's not just I shoot. And, you know, I look and I shoot and that's it. But ways to defend yourself, having shields, having countermeasures, electronic countermeasures, having ways perhaps to scramble uh, warp drives so that you can, you know, glue people in place instead of letting them go and so on and so on. So, and also warp bubbles, which is a concept I think we, we borrow from EVE uh, so that, you know, warping is not absolutely safe if you, if you, you know, travel along uh, uh, PVP areas. So that, that is another set of, uh, new things that are going to be added along the way. Uh, I cannot have you know a precise roadmap of that, but this is going to happen. You know, it's it's sure we want to do this, and that will enrich the existing PvP. And then, uh, and that's probably uh, you know I don't want to give any dates, but it's not going to happen very very soon. But we're going to have had the PvP on planets, which is essentially the same as territory warfare, because that's you know how it's going to manifest itself. And the idea is that, well, there is first that we need a new set of weapons and, and radar, et cetera, because we need to adapt the scale of things on the planet. You don't want to be able to target something on the other side of the planet, which is, you know, something you would typically do with current radars because it makes sense in space, but not on planets. So that's, I would say that's the easy part. We also want to make territories more central and strategic in what's going to happen uh, on that um, you know, on the PvP on planets. Uh, one very important idea is that you know, once you, you own several territories, uh, the one, for example, you encircle one territory tile with other territory tiles of yours, then the one in the center, if you have enough of those, like more than five, then the one in the middle becomes effectively uh, safe. And you cannot attack it anymore. So that, that kind of thing is interesting because it allows to imagine that if you co conquer a large amount of land, basically the tiles in the middle are going to be more and more secure, effectively secure, because to get to them, you need to sort of you know, crunch your way uh, through the peripheral territories until you can, you, you can attack them. So they are not safe, but you know, if, the, if we're talking about a large land mass and a, and a big empire, they are... I would say safe enough that if you trust the you know defense capability of your of your country because that's you know that's the idea we, we have in mind uh, uh, that probably you would have to finance through taxes. So we're thinking about you know the idea that if you own the territories, 
uh, you, you you get a, a way you know to 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 get money out of that that ownership. So basically, taxes. Uh, that taxes could be used you know to to provi provide uh, very good quality defense and basically make the the central tiles de facto almost safe. Never completely safe, so it's not like in a non-PVP area, but it could become safe enough for people to dis decide to live there uh, with a reasonable amount of, you know, confidence that it's going to be fine. Interesting, you see, so that that's what is coming with uh, PVP on planets, territory warfare. That We have not yet started to work on that, to be clear, so this is going to come a bit later. Uh, we have at least two, you know, important releases that we want to work on before that. Uh, so I think that gives you a, a, an overview. Um, well, I can go into more specific questions if you want, but it's a good introduction about PVP, I guess. I, I don't hear you, uh, Ju, I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you. That brings up the concept of organizational wallets. Oh yeah, sure, that's that's uh, developed as I, as I speak and it's gonna come, uh, as I said, there's a, there's a big, um, you know, there's a big feature coming um, I'm sorry, a big uh, release coming by uh, the end of the, the year. I'm actually looking at my screen right now to try to um, get things more specific. Uh, yeah, there, there, are, uh, there are a lot of things coming um, soon and that will actually be uh, uh, fixing the wallets for the org. Of course, you need a wallet for the orgs uh, because you know, that's, that's a central uh, thing that, that uh, if you want to run an org, you can ask people to just pick from their own pockets wherever you, you want to do things. So this is going to come uh, probably not for the, the next release, uh, but uh, the, white, the one uh, just after is going to come. Oh, that'd be great. It's, it's absolutely necessary, yes. That would be great. Uh, so we, uh, you know, I just want to re reaffirm uh, something that you've covered in a couple of previous uh, streams that you've been in, and that is that the current safe area in the game is going to stay, which encompasses... Confirmed, the, confirmed. The uh, that's a very important point because, you know, that, that there's been a lot of uncertainty on that. Um, our rationale is that, you know, well, there's there's a lot of good reasons why you could have, you know, half of value saved, the other half uh, not safe. It's interesting, but overall, I mean, it's it's uh, there will be a lot of planets that are not safe. There will be already a lot of, you know, areas that are, uh, you know, completely PvP and a lot of opportunities for gameplay specific to that type of gameplay. So we felt it's better to, you know, leave it the way it is, to have a sort of a central area that is that is really the you know the heart of the game where you start and you know you, you you're not really scared all the time about everything and that's that's a good uh, a good idea and then you know once we introduce new systems and we, we expand i mean we will have more and more areas where pvp will occur the real important point you know is how do we differentiate the the pvp areas from the non pvp so that pvp areas are way more interesting and valuable uh, that that you know you consider actually taking the risk to go there, and it goes with territory, uh, you know, warfare, and and overall, I mean, uh, making sure that territory is our value. That is not only just you know the ore that you have actually on the underneath, but that they have other dimensions, and we're going to work on that in particular with the energy system and so on. I'm, I'm going to talk about that perhaps later. Look forward to the is, energy the way, system. That's... It's part of the PVP uh, uh, balancing, by the way. Uh, so the, the energy sim system is, is uh, simply put, is a is a way for every ship, you know, to have a certain amount of energy available, depending on uh, your your core, but also and possibly on some elements that you have deployed that are capable to generate energy, and you can consume this energy uh, by deploying certain. Ele I mean, if you deploy a weapon or mm -hmm. an engine or, or things like that, you know, that are strategic they will consume energy. So it comes suddenly with a trade-off. You can't just stuff infinite amount of whatever on the on the ship. But JC, that, we, we love these ships that have a hundred, you know, large, <laughs> large Atmo engines. Come on. It's, it's, I mean, that's the problem with every, I mean, uh, let's maybe talk about that because that's a central thing. I, I, I'm absolutely sure that a lot of people will not be happy with this kind of uh, sudden limitations. They are only sudden because it, it happens that we were not in capacity to ship them mm -hmm. in time for better. And mm -hmm. we are sorry for that. But, you know, the amount of work is, is, is tremendous. So we had to make calls. And among those calls, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that we are about to do now that should have been done before, right? But, you know, that's the way it is. 
and and that are paramount to the equilibrium of the game. We never ever thought that it was fine to put walls of bricks on a ship. <laughs> it's obviously you know it it's cool. It makes it it makes life easier. So I understand mm-hmm. people will will be you know a bit upset about not being able to do it again. But the way to see it is. Try to forget about <laughs> the life you had before <laughs> and look at this as a sort of a new game proposition. It comes with a new challenge. Mm-hmm. Now, if you cannot break a massive ship just like that, well, then you have to think about turning the ship and, and breaking down. It's another dimension mm-hmm. that, that brings, you know, strategy, skill, foresight in the game. And the way I see it, it's, 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 uh, it's where you get the fun, in fact. You know, when you have a surmountable mm-hmm. challenge, something yep. that is... Yep hard not too hard you know you cannot see how you can deal with it um so well it should have been like and, that since the start so well it, jason it, it, I, th- I think it'll be i think it'll be warmly yeah. received uh so some people might be frustrated but one thing we notice in the game is that so many people have an engineering mindset and they really enjoy the challenge that comes with having to engineer something especially when yep. now you have now you have a power limitation uh i i think I think it's going to be exciting and inspire people to really work hard on building. It's the heart of game theory, right? The game mm-hmm. yeah. is is putting constraints uh, so that you know you have to work around those constraints uh, in a way that it's not too hard, not too easy. That's that's you know, that's the art. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of things that are way too easy in the game today, and and so we are going to make them properly gamified if you want and that that will of course you know some some people will not like it uh, i understand and in a sense i'm sorry because you know uh we spoiled some aspect of the game by by having you know delays in, in releasing certain things but, but we're, you know, we're in beta it, honestly we're it's, in better. Beta. it's, it's better. better it's better and, and not, not launch. Um, yeah we 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 just, what we want to do is by release you know that we have ironed out all those things that are uh, pending at the moment so and another uh, another thing that people keep asking us about during the show are the large or extra large uh, cores. Oh, yeah. Um, there's no real problem with uh, introducing that for static constructs, but at the same time, there's not real uh, need because you can always stuck different cores, mm-hmm. you know. And mm-hmm. so well, there's a there's an obvious workaround for static. For dynamic, of course, we get it. It would be great, you know, to build giant ships, and we we want that too. Uh, the problem is that it comes with uh, a lot of performance potential, performance issues, mm-hmm. or okay. or um, you know, problems with. Basically, it boils down to computing collisions. Uh, when things are very very big, collisions on the tip of your ship could occur very far away, where things are not properly loaded for good reasons. You know, that's how we manage the load, right? So we are not very comfortable yet to introduce something like that because of those things. And uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm I'm totally in favor of it. But right now, the consensus in the team is that it it would introduce too many bugs and issues potentially. So we are not ready to do that. Well, that's, that's um, good to know. That's good to know. I th- I think. But you know, in the, the future, as performance is improving, overall, you know, computers are getting better and whatnot. Sure, at some point we'll be able to do that uh, and it will happen. Is this going to be in one year, in two years, in five years? I'm not quite sure yet. And and we share the desire to do that, mm-hmm. but it's not something we want to rush uh, at the moment. Uh, another, uh, another PvP question that we had from the player community was, uh, any plans to add stuff like electronic warfare in the game? Yep, yeah, uh, I mentioned that I think uh, just before. It's part of the... The different tool sets that you need to have uh, as uh, you know, as you design the ship or you design your uh, PvP strategy, um, and uh, yes, so we're not working on that as I speak. So it means that it's not going to come uh, very soon. We're, we're talking about something uh, you know, we're, we're pretty much you know loaded uh, in terms of things we want to do in the game until uh, February, something like that. So uh, probably just after we're going to start to look into this, uh, but I'm not sure yet. And definitely the answer is yes, together with all our things in the same ballpark, like uh, shields uh, and and uh, ways to scramble, oh, uh, wow, walk drives and so on. No, it's it's um, obvious, I would say. You know, it's obviously part of the things you expect from a you know a PvP uh, gameplay. That's... Like this. 
that's going to be exciting. Uh, the last question I got in the PvP stuff is, uh, will, ele will elements ever be fully destroyed? You know, currently you can see the destroyed element and you can repair it, but will there be a, a, a gameplay yes. feature? Yeah. Yes, yes. So this, this is going to come, uh, uh, I would say, before the end of the year. Uh, so that's an important uh, addition. And the, the, the rationale for that, by the way, uh, is, is not to, you know, to punish the players again, is to actually create uh, opportunities for, for more uh, trading. Uh, because right now, and that's, that's a clear and well understood limitation, uh, everything you build is like forever. So uh, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, incentive to, to, to produce, mass produce anything because at some point people have everything they need, right? So mm -hmm. in real life, when you buy something, uh, at some point it doesn't work anymore and you have to buy another <laughs> one of those things. So that's why, yeah, that's yeah. why people keep selling, uh, you know, washing machines and cars and so on. Uh, so that's something we want to address with that. And the idea is that uh, we want to make it progressive so that you know you don't get your your engine immediately destroyed in combat and that's it. Uh, it get destroyed, you can repair it as you do today, but a limited number of times, and you get a you get a feedback on how many you know lives okay. basically. Okay. It has lives. Think of it as lives. You know, it has a certain number of lives, and and you can check that. Oh wow, my my engine here is is getting at the end of its life counts. So I better actually swap it for a new one uh, before I get caught in the in the battle and it gets perma destroyed and you know uh, and and I can't do anything about it. So that's that's the kind of uh, trade off. It's interesting because you know you might have a ship that has been damaged. You repair it. You're able to fly back and then you start to plan for your shopping to actually you know uh, renew it. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. That's 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 good. I I think. Uh... I think a lot of people watching the uh, the stream here are excited for the things that are coming down the pipe for PvP. It's yep. uh, well, and, 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 and the economy. This this is yep. both PvP because indeed uh, you you will by definition have a uh, at some point you will end you know uh, the, the combat because uh, right now you could have people shooting at each other and repairing constantly and it never ends. So mm -hmm. that will put mm -hmm. an end to this kind of things. And it will help the economy, which is a major oh, yeah. concern that we are working on uh, in, in the, the next release. And that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the next category of stuff, uh, we're running low on time, but I uh, uh, wanted to talk about uh, gameplay and the launch time. Uh, you know, what, what things, what are the most exciting things that you can talk about that you're, that you're preparing for launch? And uh, do we do we have uh, any any kind of timeline to show yet for launch? Well, okay. Uh, you mean the release? Uh, yeah, release, release. Yeah, release. There's so many things. I, it's a, it's a tricky question because you know everything I just mentioned uh, up, up, up until now is is part of the things that are that are exciting. Uh, there's the territory warfare we mentioned. Uh, so th these are going to add a lot of dimension to the game. Um, I couldn't tell you what is the most exciting feature coming for release, but uh, there's a conjunction of things that will make the game uh, uh, more balanced. Um, and um, in terms of timing, we are still sticking to you know the planned roadmap that that we basically ship uh, at the end of 2021, about one year after the beta. Not non-committing. If we have to shift that, we will shift it. Um, and you know we may have to because there is indeed a lot of things mm -hmm. you know to 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 finish. Uh, we'll see, but so far so good. Well, we we love what what we're seeing already. Uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of people are excited about the concept of having well, it's dual universe. So a lot of people are wondering when when the next universe, the next solar system is coming. Uh, and is that anything you can you can talk about or the new planets? Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, well, okay. So this this is loosely planned for 2021 um, because there's a lot of issues that are difficult, you know, to, to measure in terms of development time. But I promised you I would share some, um, you know, screenshots of how how it could look. And so it's just it's not binding. Okay, it's just okay. to give you a, an idea. Uh, do you see this on your screen? Not yet. 
maybe it's going to work or Hold it's on. not going to work. <laughs> I can imagine on. the frustration yeah. if it doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, is it is it working for you now? It seems to be streaming on my side. Maybe you need to switch the, yeah, you know, the origin of the stream okay. or something. All right. Let me uh, let me hide my camera. It's not going to do it. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hey, Magic, can I move you out of the uh, channel for a second? Oh, you want me to get out of the voice? Hold on, I'll bring it right back. Yep. All right, there we go. Okay. So you see the, the image? Yeah, sure do. Look at that. Okay, at that. cool. So this this is some uh, preparatory work, and you know it comes with a grain of salt. You know, this is not final. This is just internal prototypes, and you know we may have to reduce the quality severely. Uh, you know, to make it. Um, uh, work with decent FPS, blah, blah, blah. So it's just to tell you it's not uh, final, but it gives you a taste of what is currently uh, in the in the making, uh, what the artists are working on, and what we hope to be able to introduce with new planets. Uh, so this, this is showing us a variety of biomes, um, much higher quality of the assets, and diversity as well. Um, See this. This also there's a problem with the size of the the trees. We are going to fix that. Uh, some trees are ridiculously too big, so this kind of things. And um, yeah, that's on the on the moon. You see different rocks of better quality. This uh, is the moon. new engine you guys are working with, though, right? It's uh well, it's the same engine. Uh, it's just okay. that we we're working with better uh, algorithms to generate the the you know the nice. the procedural generation of the terrain and also uh, the assets. And the biome diversity and the way we are able, you know, to find control, uh, uh, fine tune, you know, the control on the on the biomes, and so this is uh, give you a taste of this. So here, maybe I should zoom maybe a bit. So you see also underwater better things. Okay, so we're working on that. That's just to you know, it's a it's a teaser. <laughs> It's not. Uh, it's nothing final, but it gives you an idea of you know the kind of things we we have in mind. So this this is um, hopefully is going to be uh, uh, available uh, in, in as part you know of the so it's it's done now, as part of the the new system that we want to release uh, next year. So it's it's a big feature really. So that's also why we were not able to push it for beta. By the way. Uh, and uh, it, it involves not only the you know the new planets, but also the gameplay that goes with it, because you need some way to jump on over that new system. So that's uh, nothing you know uh, crazy to do, but I mean it's still yet another thing that needs to be done and you know discussed regarding. I mean, if we have a lot of things we need to do on the balancing of the game, we will do the balancing of the game first. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's yes, the logic. and that makes and that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh uh, boy, we uh, another another big question are seasons, uh, seasons and, and weather, uh, and is is that something that we could see um, early after launch? It's it's uh, well, we and have some kind of prototypes. Uh, we play with this uh, with this idea. Uh, I wouldn't commit anything on that because okay. it's. Um, it, 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 I mean, it's really interesting if it not if it is not just cosmetic, but mm -hmm. it is actually coming with some interesting gameplay, which is probably more or less going to be you know related to a survival gameplay, right? So that's uh, that's a big big thing. Suddenly, it becomes you know a big feature and a big topic. Uh, now, just just if you, I mean. Also, if you make a rain somewhere, what happens if you go in space? You should have a sort of a, you know, cloud at least somewhere there. So it, it suddenly correlates uh, weather with uh, the dynamics of the clouds. Voila, it's getting more complicated. So it's not just, you know, adding a special effects on your screen. It has all this dimension that, that comes with this. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the... On the Purely visual side, we have some prototypes. We played with the idea, as I said, but it's mm -hmm. nothing that really is hot on the list. Yeah, I, I noticed it, it, will, it, will, it will come eventually. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's something you know. If we if we're still there in ten years, we can pretty safely say that it's going to be in the game. 
<laughs> but, yeah. you know, uh, but it's funny. If you, so if you're, if you're flying around in the game and you've got clouds turned on uh, and you're in first person, it's, it's kind of thrilling as you're flying through the yeah. cloud because you can't see what's in front of you. And, uh, you know, that, that's another thing. I mean, one thing we want to add, for example, is um, in the new planets with the new biome system, uh, we're working about the possibility to have localized fog. So that mm. you can have, you know, on the surface some some forest with uh with this fog and it's super cool, you know. Uh that's something we might actually get uh with mm -hmm. the new uh with the new planets. That kind of things. Uh, another question we have is uh are you planning on adding uh, more features to the market interface and also uh a timeline, if at all possible, for player markets? Uh, okay, so two different questions. Yeah, uh, improving yeah. the current market, which is uh, severely under featured, uh, especially if you, you know, if if you're a trader, uh, you need more information. You need better uh, ways. So this this is something we know. Um, I would say we need to fix the markets in terms of fixing the economy first. The markets are underused at the moment for reasons that we perfectly understand. Uh, basically, you know, everybody is able to build everything he wants without needing to buy anything from anybody else. So that's the core problem we need to solve. Then uh, I think we are going to do a bit of polish on the market UI as it is today. Mm -hmm. And then there's another uh, dimension to your question, which is player-owned market. Right, right. Um, the the full feature of that is that you can actually deploy a market that is that is seen by other players as a normal market, and you can control it with your own uh, taxes and defend it if, if it's in the PvP area, etc. It's it's a very big feature because of all the loopholes and all the, the mm -hmm. exploits possible there, mm -hmm. uh, and and so we we are. It's not an urgent thing on our roadmap. However. Uh, we want to we want to boost you know the possibilities of the dispensers that exist today, so that you could actually sell stuff already without you being online. That's the core thing, you know. Versus being in barter, mm -hmm, right? Barter right. is fine, but you need to be there and you basically need to be waiting for clients all day long. It's not very fun. So uh, you already have the dispensers. It's something we're going to fix uh, uh, very rapidly in uh, before the end of the year, so that you can actually pre-visualize the content of the batch you're going to receive because today you have to trust okay. whoever the guy is. Uh, so we know that, of course, anyways, yeah. it's yeah. not something we discover and we, oh, yeah, yeah, like, it's something we know from the start, but we didn't have time to implement yeah. it. Yeah. So this is going to come, that will help uh, so that you could already start to sell things on your own, uh, locally, advertise the price somehow, and, and that's the first step to the world. A player on market and we're going to actually also push that so that you can sell ships this is a very very important uh addition that will come by the end of the year you'll be able Ooh. to sell ships because uh we will introduce you know one-time blueprints that is fundamental if you sell to their blueprint as part of your batch you're screwed because the guy is going to be able to make copies at the infinitum <laughs> yeah. so that's a problem of course it's an obvious one we know about it and it's not like again it's something we didn't have time so, to introduce so again before. you think you think that feature uh, will come by the end of the year yeah that's fantastic that, that, that's for sure and and it comes also with another aspect for ship uh, setting which is you know, ensuring you you protect your intellectual property by having DRM digital right management system mm -hmm. in the in the construct so that you can effectively lock the possibility to make a blueprint out of it, lock the possibility to open the Lua uh, editor and the screen content, and uh, uh, copy paste voxels out of that construct to some other construct. So that will I think that would cover all the concerns of uh, manufacturers mm -hmm. to be able to safely uh, sell the ship in an autonomous way through a dispenser. And on the other side, the guy can trust a little bit more what he's buying. He cannot yet inspect the blueprint uh, in the sense that you would like to at least visualize what is the ship, you know, in a sort of a preview. Mm -hmm. uh, or even better, what you know, the, the, the thing you really want is that you, you're able to uh, run the the ship in a simulation and try it for yourself before you buy it. Oh, that, oh, oh, that would be fantastic. Would <laughs> that would that would come <laughs> one day because that's the logical thing you want to do. Uh, you know, for to cover that feature seriously and have you know. Uh, but I would say you know, 
at some point you 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 kind of trust them. I mean, the guy is saying your blueprint. There's a business behind that, and you know, reputation is some kind of thing. I mean, you you, it's it's you can work with uh, the, the the thing we are going to push uh, next. Uh, you can work with that already without having a blueprint visualization. I think. Uh, but you know that's that's things that are going to come and that will improve the the ability for players to trade, uh, not with full fledged player owned markets as we know them mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. today, but already you know uh, it's a good step forward and it should unlock a lot of possibilities. It, it, incremental steps are are good. It uh, allows. I think it makes it easier for you to manage too. Uh, would be my guess. Well, and you know, we don't have a choice most of the time. You know, we <laughs> can't just ship the big feature because it's not a, it's never going to be shipped otherwise. Or oh, it's going to be shipped so you know in the future that uh, it's too late. So that's that's uh, you know that's that's how you develop a game. I think it's uh, full of constraints of that kind. And- big uh, a big question that we can get asked constantly uh, on our shows. Uh, yep. is uh, Madrafi here in chat asked, uh, and that is, uh, what's uh, more elements, more elements for the ships or different types of skins for the engines, uh, different shapes, uh, and and just the, a more a bigger variety of elements. Any kind of any kind of timeline that you could you could give for? Uh, uh, I mean, is, is should we expect more elements during the beta, or is that something we should wait for after launch? Uh, definitely for the release, this is this is gonna come. Um, it's not clear, you know, the um, uh, how much of this will be part of, uh, you know, the the cosmetic shop that we want to mm-hmm. develop. Okay, okay. Uh, because you know, we want we want to provide basic elements that are, you know, f- uh, giving you the function and it's functional and it's playable and it's fun, and and put all the things that are purely cosmetic on the on the cosmetic side. So this is definitely mm-hmm. a lot of work on our side because uh, there's a lot of assets to produce and. Yeah. Uh, you know, something perhaps people don't realize, but I mean, the game is not with a cartoon look, mm-hmm. uh, which is often a choice that is about the cost of producing assets. Producing an asset in the universe is a lot of work because you have to do all those details, all those textures. It takes mm-hmm. a lot of time. So um, it's not a it's not a simple thing to say, well, why don't you just ship some five new engines? Uh, that That is often, you know, in competition with... Um, if we say, for example, we are we're working on the the energy uh, management uh, gameplay, as I said, there will be new elements to produce energy. Well, that means we have to design those new elements, and that that takes priority in, in the development from the the art team, right? So uh, definitely, I think we're going to have something along those those lines by release. Um, and I don't have any precise date to give you mm-hmm. at the moment. Oh, that's, that's fine. But it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. And it's going to happen. It's a very good thing, obviously. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not a question. It's a question of when. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, well, I think uh, a cosmetic shop is going to be a blast. <laughs> really, that's going to be... Uh, when we get new skins for the engines, you're going to see ship designs we haven't seen before. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, you're going to see building designs we didn't see before. And I think the the way be also to look at this, you know, from a game design development part, it's it's to say um, it's good that you you give this kind of things progressively uh, because it, it renew the interest into uh, getting back to building new stuff and mm-hmm. you know, exploring these new possibilities. Uh, and you have to think about that as you design a game uh, like that, which is supposed to be played over a very long period of time. Um, you know, you, if you give everything at start and everything is there, mm-hmm. uh, it's not as good, I, even for the player, you know, it, it doesn't help to renew interest and, and get yeah. new things to do. And this is something we, we're thinking a lot about. We uh, we get a, we do get a lot of questions about element scalability, and I, I'm not sure what, what kind of challenges there'd be uh, on your side for being able to scale an element up or down. Um, but I don't know if that's uh, something we'll see. Down is not a big issue. Up is, is more problematic because uh, you don't want to have uh, uh, textures that are pixelized. So right. you have to, to some extent, you have to redo the textures. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I'm not an expert in, in this. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not an artist. I don't use uh, 3ds <laughs> Mac and so on. But what I keep hearing is that, uh, oh, JC, you know, it's not that easy. So <laughs> I guess there must be some things I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, 
Look, do you have, uh, so we're five minutes over. Do you have um, five minutes to jump in the game? Of course, of course. Let's awesome. go. Uh, so you want me to jump in the game or I just watch you? Uh, no, I want you to jump. If you can jump in, that'd be, that'd be a lot of fun. Okay, so you need to tell me where I should be. Uh, well, I'm at um, a spot on the uh, on the moon. We found something. Pantera found this while we were just touring along. And there is this amazing pyramid. This is a fully terraformed oh, yeah, I see that. pyramid. And uh, there can you, is a, Can you give me the coordinates somehow? Yeah, well, if you could have be, access... Be, do you have access to... Okay. Do you have access to a VR pod and uh, Magic? Do you have the coordinates that you can copy for him? I do. Paste them in um, Twitch chat. I have a VR pod the way. Yeah, it's oh, got a VR look station. For, look for yeah. If you have a if you have a, a VR station uh, handy, uh, yeah. Look for Landmark Explorer Stream Ship. On and my that, way. That is. This is a ship designed by uh, her very own 1K. <laughs> you know him well. So, uh, what was the name already? Landmark Explorer Streamship. Okay. I think if you just type in Landmark. Just it Landmark, it'll show up. Yep. Getting there. And anybody else who's in game, you're welcome to, to come. Uh, just use the uh, VR station. Hello, Candela. Hello, Abel. Oh, you know what? I think you're not going to see me. Um, That's okay. I'm using a, oh, it's I'm using... a bad mode on. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 by default, I'm, I'm not visible. But um, That's quite all right. Yeah, sorry about that. But I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm loading. <laughs> so we really, really dearly wanted you guys to see this. I did send uh, pictures a while back to Neris, so she's, she, uh, she had a chance to at least see the images that we sent. Um, but this, everybody, this is really, really amazing because this is a fully terraformed Giza plateau. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to jump in and say a lot of chatter has been in Twitch chat here about terraforming. And okay, terraformers, look, you can do it. You can do it. Do you? <laughs> yeah, and that, that's that's pretty much amazing. Um, we had to reduce, you know, the the height at which you can you can uh, terraform because there okay. there was a lot of exploits that could be done, and also you know ways to. Uh, we don't want to have planetary hair. <laughs> you know, <laughs> see what I mean? Uh, but yeah. but otherwise, uh, yeah. so I'm in the ship. By the way, I don't know. You probably don't see me, do you? Do you um, see anyone? Let me, no. let me see. Yeah. Shadow, yeah, I, I see a shadow. So. But I'm here. Don't worry. And uh, I'm actually trying to get out of the ship, and I found the hatch. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow, that's impressive indeed. <laughs> We were speechless. And, 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 you know, you know the thing I love also is that in in the on the horizon in the distance, you can, you can see this giant tower. I don't I don't know what it is, but there's there's your. It's beautiful because there's life. There is there is things going on. This world exists in a sense. You know, yeah, it's not well, just. Uh, and you know the the real Giza plateau uh, has Cairo behind it. <laughs> Indeed, we are, we don't often see it. <laughs> they hide it pretty well, but it's just in the middle of the city, almost. Yes, as yeah. I, as I've never been there, but I, I've seen some, uh, you know, uh, real pictures. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it, just incredible. Now, what is really shocking is the pyramid is not solid; it is hollow, and there's a yeah, tunnel. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a, inside actually. There's wow. a tunnel system there. Uh, the Sphinx. Come on, it's, it's just—it's amazing. And now, mind you, this is this is with the, the beta level of terraforming tools. So we don't know what you guys have planned for terraforming tools uh, yeah. it, by by the launch. But this this we, was we need to do better. Uh, we need to do better in particular because terraforming is not just about digging a hole to get to your uh, you know, mining uh, resource, but we we want to make it more. Uh, practical to build, for example, uh, reusable tunnels on which you could have uh, mining drones, uh, you know, circulating. Uh, this is something that is not yet happening because 
as I said at the beginning, there's a lot of things that are too easy in the game, and uh, you know the the fact that the you know the the, the link container allows you to teleport matter up to two kilometers on mm -hmm. the surface mm -hmm. ruins entirely the need to do anything like a droning mi um, sorry a mining drone or, or things like that. But to do a mining drone, you need to be able to do um, uh, you know some some kind of uh, practicable tunnel that you can actually drive on easily. So these these are all sorts of things we need to to work on so that there will be more possibilities. The fun yeah. fact, if you want to know, at the very, very, very early versions of the universe, like uh, six years ago, mm -hmm. there was a possibility to delimitate a certain part of the, you know, of the, the environment around you and to make a construct out of it. So there was absolutely no difference between oh, the wow. planet and the construct. So you, the construct was just, I mean, when you were flying around, it was just uh, something you carve out of the out of the planet, basically, and you make it fly. There was a lot of uh, concern with that, and and also technical limitations sure. to deal with. So it has it, it, it was gone. But originally, uh, you know, planets were like you know, giant ships. In fact, there's no you know, there was no special treatment <laughs> for that. Anyway, well, that was it's, the good old time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely amazing. Of everything we've found in the game. This is the one that strikes me the most because this is there's not a single static construct around. This is all terraform ground, yeah. terraform terrain, and it shows it shows like what you can do if you put your mind to it. Uh, Grimstone, we know, uh, and you can get it to get to it on the VR stations, uh, on the VR pod. Uh, he made it to the center of Teoma, and he really cleared out the core area so you can see the core of the planet. And it's it's just fascinating that uh, you know it took him. I like uh, to see that. <laughs> it took him many hours. If you've got just a, another moment, we can go there right now. Uh, okay. Yeah. There. There's also there's also a VR station there. Yeah, he's got a VR pod uh, okay, there. Okay, so let's try that. Yeah, so that that's you know that's the beauty of emergent gameplay. It's by definition that uh, we we cannot predict what's going to happen. If we could predict, it means that the game is so constrained that basically there's only one thing to do and everybody does it and that's it so uh here you have enough dimensions in your you know in the freedom so that uh you know we, we're far from having seen everything you know, that could be uh done in the game so that's that's really uh, encouraging to see all those things and it's amazing so it's I mean, called the, the it's called elevators, the uh, the the sheep expo that that happened. Uh, oh, but well, that was amazing! Ago. Yeah, all those things are completely emergent and and, um, and quickly. I wanted to do a quick shout out to uh, Hyperion and uh, and the team that runs the Alioth Aerospace Expo. The next expo yep. is coming up uh, in January, and it's being just the expo area is being built on over two hundred large static cores. Oh, that's going to be a nice server stress test. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would make your morning. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to need a lot of coffee. It's going to no, be absolutely that, That's exciting. good. That's good. And um, that, that's fantastic. And, you know, um, what, what I think is that, you know, the look of the game, the kind of things you're going to see in it is going to constantly evolve as you have this sort of civilizations growing. And, you know, it's... I can't wait to actually see large cities populated with lots of people and, and things like that. So it's maybe going to take a couple of years more. But, you know, and the game is renewing itself sort of automatically. Mm -hmm. There's new things to do, new opportunities, new challenges. <coughs> What's the name of the... the it's Tioma, if you search Tioma or Tioma Core, what? Yep. You'll, you'll see it. Tioma Station, Tioma Elevator, Mr. Bond. To my core, got it. On my way. <laughs> and and that, Graham... that, you know, that addition, uh, that addition of the VR, uh, possibly the VR stations. This is a late addition before the beta that um, I pushed because I thought that's so much needed because you have all those fantastic things. Yep. That's that's true. But I mean, if there are several hours of you know efforts away to go and visit, it's not going to happen. And we have to have a way to, without breaking the game, and uh, you know, the, you know, creating abuses, opportunities. Uh, you have to have a way to be able to visit them right 
just like that. Yep. And so what's fascinating is, you know, we're at the core of the planet and there's no gravity at the core. That makes sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, the gravity, we just use the, the Newton formula and mm -hmm. that's it. So you get, you get with that, you know, you get what you've just said, plus you get orbiting for free. It's just the law of physics. It does right, that. Right. So <laughs> there's nothing, you know, nothing to program. Ex expect ex except sorry the that sounds the like it that sounds like the title for uh the next song on the uh, addition to the soundtrack get orbiting for free <laughs> you get orbiting for free <laughs> with newton thank you newton <laughs> okay is... so i am i am now wait a second 56 kilometer underground i guess i'm very oh whoa 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 okay <laughs> It's the only time I've seen this in the game anywhere that someone has made it to the core and cleared out a large area and Grim. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't know, Grimstone, did you do this all by yourself? Like, uh, I don't know, there's a story here. So that was the spike in mining uh, on the server load. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did it by himself. Yeah. So I think these red, um, um, thing in the middle, those giant cubes, uh, they are here to avoid, um, you know, actually the formulas and everything, they don't like to be close to uh, the center. They, they, they tend towards the uh, infinity, uh, you know, it's, uh, so it's a, it's a place you don't want to have players actually go because it, it, there's a lot of edge cases. We could deal with them, of course, but I mean, we dealt with them <laughs> with putting giant, uh, unmindable things there. I think that's, that's the way it's been done. It's amazing. Yeah, I. And indeed, the the, the zero G <laughs> thing it, is pretty cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, we're, it makes sense. The it's, center, uh, the center of Tioma. The center of Tioma. I do have uh, one last destination, and uh, that yep. if you have just a few more minutes, and that would be uh, the uh, the space station, uh, not space station. Yeah, the space station that uh, that we have. Um, and I know it's a work in progress, and Nuber's going to shoot me, but uh, you guys got to come see this. This is <laughs> this, this the uh, space station has been, and it should be called Nexus. So when you get to the VR pod, look for Nexus. Okay. So we're going from zero G at the core of a planet to zero G in space, and it's a, it's really exciting. So we got the uh, the 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 station that was used in a lot of your uh, the, the trailers that you guys put together. So we got it back into oh. the world. And Bomb really? Diggity and Bomb Diggity has designed some extensions to huge. it. Yeah, you, you couldn't have done it. It it was absolutely gigantic. And and I I think uh, there is a story here, and that story is really addresses the core of the game, and that is community. I think that's been your number one thing from the very beginning has been community and the level of effort that it's taken to put this in the back in the game so quickly. Wouldn't have. I mean, it required community support uh, in just a massive way. We had, we had millions yeah. of uh, liters of concrete donated, and uh, it, really impressive. So search Nexus. Yeah, somehow I get stuck in the loading back. So give me a second sure. to, to fix that. Um, and meanwhile, uh, maybe a few words about what's coming before the end of the year. Because um, I, I can't resist. Uh, there will be a. <laughs> I, I found some time to work on Lua. You know that I'm basically doing this, and I've added a lot of things for Lua people. Uh, possibility to inspect containers, to manage industries. Um, I did also, you know, uh, colored lights that you can control in Lua or set the colors the way you want. So Christmas trees, basically. Ooh, um, all right. And and I mean a lot of you know small things that 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 will appeal uh, to uh, you know to Lua. To Lua programmers and will benefit hopefully to you know everybody, as you know, as always with this uh, logic is that even if you don't do any Lua at all, uh, you you should benefit from uh, uh, better constructs, better ships, you know, that actually use this Lua even if you don't know how it works. Well, now, now JC, they want to know if we'll have the colored lights before Christmas. If we're gonna have what? Sorry. The Lua to change the color of lights before Christmas. Yes, yes, that is a yes. Ooh. It's already Ooh. done. Excellent. No, it's, it's in uh, QA testing, and, and we 
gonna be uh, we're gonna be able to ship this. There's a there's a lot of small improvements. Um, uh, okay, just a sec. I'm going into Nexus. You said yeah, Nexus. Yeah. All right. Hmm. There's no. How do you write that? Any X U S. Any X U S. Right. Uh, I don't have any match. Is it maybe oh, loading? Infinity Corp. Space Station. Uh, I see. Second. What is what's its abbreviation? Oh, you know what? It's not public. I'm seeing it. It's, it's only uh, uh, set to the organization. Well, All right. That's why. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can see my uh, my screen here. I do. Oh, no, yes, 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 yes. I see it. <laughs> I see it. It's amazing. And Great. So th this, I think, is a testament to the decision you guys made to, yeah. to keep the uh, existing safe zone permanent. And it's, yeah, it's... That, that was that was a very important message to, to get through, you know, so that people could start to build uh, without without worries. And, you know, uh, I would say also if we do a good job, uh, it should also be sort of reasonable to build uh, significant structures into PVP areas. We don't want PVP areas to be deserted. So that there should be ways for you to be, you know, feeling confident enough. Uh, that you can uh, you can build there, so it's I, you know I don't have the, the exact you know recipe for all this, but I mean we're gonna make sure that um, if you invest enough, uh, you know if you make enough efforts, you can you can reach a certain level of relative safety, always relative of course, but but you know uh, high enough so that you can you can move on. Um, yep, uh, what is going also can I can tell you about. Um, uh yeah that's that's it well jc we have uh we have so much fun in the game our show on the landmark explorer channel which we do four or five days a week is just simply going around and looking exploring and looking at creations that players are making and what we've seen in two and a half months is is extraordinary yeah. And it's only two and a half months. You're right. If you think about what's going to happen in two years, yes, amazing. Uh, and I think it's it's something that is hard to you know uh, you know uh, anticipate. I mean, a lot of people don't necessarily uh, realize that that is going to go so far. Um, so you know, we're, we're going to make it. Uh, we're going to make this this world all together. Uh, you're going to make it. Um, and that's that's the spirit. And all we have to do is to do a good job to provide you with uh, the best tools, the best mechanics, uh, game mechanics, so that it's balanced and it's fair. Uh, there's still a lot of work on that. Uh, we know it, but we're gonna get there. And you know, at the end of the day, what what we have is an alternative dual version of reality. That's what we're trying to make. Mm -hmm. So it sounds a bit crazy, but. Um, well, I think the technology is there. We, we can actually do that now, not only in science fiction. It, it's amazing. It's amazing. I know a lot of people are anxious for VR to come. Oh, really? Uh, well, be... that, that's, I, I want to I point again you know, to the Feature of Vote website. It's dualuniverse.featureofvote.com. Go there and fight for it because you know, that's, that's how we can see you know, how much popularity for certain features there are. And actually the you know the backlog for reviewing the the pending suggestions is juicing. So I, I think by probably next week is gonna be uh, sort of perched. And uh, so you can see there's a lot of suggestions. There's a lot, it's a lot of work if you want to read every single one of them. But that's gonna be helpful for us to see you know what's uh, mm. what's going on. And there's there's a uh, just to answer some concerns um, we're working with a third party. This this website is not put on by us. Uh, and there's a there's a mechanism mechanism so that you can in principle you know not abuse the system and vote several times. I don't know how solid it is, but I would say please people you know don't don't try to to hack the system. It's not going to work. We're going to see it. We're going to revert the the, the changes. Uh, there's a system to prevent it anyway. If if you find a way to hack it, let us know. But you know, it's uh, it should be a tool uh, for the community to communicate with us, uh, just use it in a fair way. 
because then we're going to be able to you know see uh you know what what is urging and what is less urging and that's a fundamental thing for us to balance the efforts uh on the production we can't do everything so at some point we have to mm -hmm. you know, decide what's going to be more or less impactful the uh, we had a great discussion uh before, while we were getting the stream set up uh and what we one thing we really hope to do this time around was to uh, just to kind of spitball and brainstorm a little bit and talk about some some potential low hanging fruit in the game that would be very entertaining for the player community, but uh, we'll save that for another time, JC. I know you're tight on time. With pleasure, with pleasure. Okay. And as I said, I mean we we have already a lot of things cooking that uh, I think you you will like, um, and uh, you know it's going to be uh, improving. Uh, especially on the balancing, uh, pretty shortly, and then uh, you know moving forwards to better PvP and everything we discussed um, as time goes on. That's great. Well, JC, thank you so much. Very gracious yep, to you. to thank stay you. so late for us. I know we ran about uh, twenty five minutes over, but uh, it's always it's a pleasure. I, I really enjoy you know having uh, the opportunity to exchange with you guys. It's uh it's really uh, thank you. The pleasure is mine. And and one one last thing I just want to thank you for uh, for you know inter engaging with our tweets every time we go live with discovering new ships and and outposts uh, we get a lot of support from uh, from Dual Universe and as a result I think players are getting to see things that uh, wouldn't normally see yeah, so we're grateful yeah. very grateful well thank you for you know thank you for posting all those things it's fantastic and and. Uh, I really enjoy seeing all the things and be surprised. It's a uh, never ending you know, stream of uh, new stuff and, and amazing creations. Uh, it's really looking good. Thanks. Yep, you're welcome. Everybody, thank you for watching the show. And uh, we will be back on the Landmark Explorer channel on Monday. Uh, come join us as we discover new outposts and ships. And thanks for joining us. Good JC, everybody. see you in the funny pages, my friend. <laughs> cool. <laughs>